Hi all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're looking at the next a, uh, 2018 AP Calculus free response question. And so let's look at this one. So we have a graph of a continuous function, g, the derivative, which is, so the derivative of the function. So g is the derivative of f, as shown above. The function g is piecewise linear, and then it has this kind of parabola part here, over here. If f of 1 is equal to 3, what is the value of f of negative 5? Well, the relationship between f and g is f is equal to the integral of g of x dx, right? So um, actually, I'll use a different variable. So yeah, we want to do the antiderivative. So what we want to do is we want to say f of x is equal to the integral of g of t dt. Now, in general, when you want to do this, like x has to go up here, but you can make this anything. And what the, what you want to see is because f of 1 is equal to 3, if I make it like this, what's nice is when I plug in 1, uh, this integral integrals from 1 to 1, which is 0, and I add 3. Okay, so that's so that'll give me 0 plus 3. So that that that's how I can guarantee I can construct the antiderivative properly that um, gives me my answer. Now they want to know what f of negative 5 is. So that's the integral from 1 to negative 5 g of t dt minus, uh, plus 3. Well this in is the area from 1 to negative 5. So it's this area here. The tricky thing about this area is because I'm integrating right to left, we, we, we change the negative. So think about going from negative 5 to 1, calculate the area, and then flip it around because I'm integrating in the, wrong, the different order. So this area is negative area because it's below the x-axis. I can break it up into a rectangle and a triangle. And so this area down here, let's see, that's 4 by 3. That's minus 12 right there. Uh, 4 by 3 and then this is 3 by 1 so that's uh, minus 1.5 and then this is positive 1 because this is a 2 by 1 2 times 1 is uh, 2 times 1 half is 1 so area of a triangle is right so then uh, if I were to do from left to right it would be minus 13.5 plus 1 or minus 12.5 but because we're going the wrong way, it's positive 12.5 because we're integrating in the wrong order, right to left. It's positive 12.5 plus 3. That's equal to 15.5. Okay, evaluate the integral from 1 to 6. The derivative. Yeah, from 1 to 6. So now I want um, this part this area here from 1 to 6. Well, 1 to 3 is pretty easy. This this area here is a 2 by 2. This area is 4, right? The area under this curve, I actually have to perform an integral. So this is going to be uh, 4 plus the integral from 3 to 6. 3 to 6 is governed by this equation, 2x minus 4 squared dx. And um, this by power rule, or you can do u substitution for u equals x minus 4, but it's 4 plus 2 x minus 4 cubed divided by 3 evaluated from 3 to 6. So I'm going to do 4 plus, I'm going to bring out the 2 thirds, this, and then I'm just going to plug in uh, 6 minus 4, that's 2 cubed, minus uh, 3 minus 4, negative 1 cubed. 2 cubed is uh, 8, negative 1 cubed is negative 1, 8 plus 1 is 9, so it's 4 plus 2 thirds times 9, that's uh, 3, 6, that's 10. Okay. On what open intervals, if any, is the graph f both increasing and concave up? Okay. To be increasing, f prime has to be greater than 0, but that's the same as saying g is greater than 0. So where is g greater than 0? Let me erase some of this stuff. Just uh, now we dug the areas. Where is g greater than 0? 
uh, g is greater than zero between zero to six. So that happens from zero to six. Okay. Um, concave up is the second derivative is greater than zero. That implies g prime is greater than zero. So that's when it's increasing. The slopes are positive. Well, that happens between negative two to negative one, then zero to one, then uh, four to six. So what's the intersection of these two when it's both? Um, it's just this interval here between zero and one and four and six. It's both increasing and concave up because the concave up means the second derivative is positive and um, slope up or, or when the function is positive, that's when the first derivative is positive. That's when, that's when g is greater than zero. Find the x coordinate of each point of inflection on the graph of f. Um, of the graph of f. So point of inflection, second derivative equals zero. That's the same as g prime is equal to zero or undefined. So when are the slopes zero or undefined? Uh, it looks like, and it has to change. So there's zero all the way this point, but it's not changing signs at that point. So we got there, there, zero. Here's a zero slope. So I'm gonna say only this point and it, it's so point of inflections is it's it's really when the concavity changes. So when I'm looking at the first derivative, I'm looking when the der first derivative is changed from positive to negative or negative to positive. And that happens right here at x equals four. Because the derivatives go from positive to negative to positive, and that implies the second derivative goes from negative to positive, concave down to concave up. Alright, let's take a look at the answers to number three here. Uh, why did I mess that up? Oh, 15.5. Uh, that's what I got. 15.5, and that's. No, that's 12.5. Um, I did three, and they got 19 over two. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is only nine. I think I added up wrong. So th this should have been um, only nine here. This should have been 8.5. No, 9.5, 9.5. Yeah. Okay, so I got that one wrong. Um, second one is 10. I did get that one right. And this one, um, 0 and 1 and 4 and 6. That's good. And the graph of f is a point of inflection x equals 4 because it changed from decrease to increase in x equals 4. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.